This would, this would have been my game as a footballer. Power stuff. What you used to call me? Uh, little Bulgarian weightlifter, wasn't it? <laughs> Gary Neveloff. Yeah, Gary Neveloff, he used to call me. <laughs> Do you have bouts where you feel a bit more down? Not loads of time. I'd say, most of the time. He was scratching. Bite him. When I saw them signs and you start Googling stuff, don't you? Well, what yeah. is autism? I just knew. Oh! I'm strong as oh! I can switch pain off as well, Scalzi, can you? Who the are you? <laughs> <laughs> I can switch pain off. Imagine you're just running into that box, Patrice is about to cross it. So I gave two goals away against Vasco da Gama in the World Club Championship. Uh, uh, Fiasco da Gama. <laughs> On this episode of The Overlap, I travel the short distance to Oldham to catch up with one of the most technically gifted football players this country has ever produced. Paul Scholes and I have known each other for over 30 years, but rarely have I seen him speak so openly. We talk about the highs and lows of his life after football, what makes him tick, and of course, our beloved Manchester United. Welcome to another episode of The Overlap and today I'm going to be speaking to someone that I've known for 25 years and probably going to have the longest conversation I've ever had with him. How are you? Yeah, mate, you okay? Are you good? Yeah, yeah, good, thanks. Well, this is pretty good, isn't it? It's all right, isn't it? Nightclub? Spent a few Gym, sorry. Spent a few quid here, right? Well, you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look round, come on, show me. Oh, yes, the branded plates. Tell you what, you've done a really good job, by the way. My game, that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the last time I was on a bike with you? Was. Was you remember when I was retiring? Was when I was retiring. And you used to sit there on the bike and I was here, do you remember? Very good. Yeah, you used to sit at the front, didn't you? I sit at the front. The facing, bikes at the front were facing the front. Facing, lot, they? facing that way. So you faced everyone. You yeah. were facing back this way. Yeah. And you were there. Yeah. And I remember saying to you, I've only got 10 days to go, nine days to go, eight days to go. You don't remember that, will you? No. <laughs> no, no. But you don't remember, to be fair, taking the piss out of my Instagram yesterday. No, so there's not much chance you remember me back 10 years ago. I don't it? remember a lot of things, no. It was the season before when I was going to retire and I was, I was playing. Do you remember you scored against City? Yeah. I was going to retire then, at the end of that season. I was, and in my mind... I never knew that. Yeah, he only, he, only re he only rang me, David Gill, for three, four days before the end of the season to keep me on. I never knew that. Yeah. How old was you then? I was 35. 34, 35. Well, you never told anybody you was planning to do that, did you? Yeah, I told you. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I did. No, I you didn't. I'm, I said, I'm finishing in three weeks. No, you I'm didn't. Done. No you, way. You wouldn't believe me, I did. I don't believe you. It's the I truth. don't believe you now. It's the truth. No. And I'm saying I just always thought it was that West Brom game that did it. I didn't think no, there no, was no. any plans. Before the end of that season before, yeah, I'd agreed to go to Sky. And I remember saying to you, I've only got 20 days to go, 15 days to go, 14 days. There was a countdown on the bikes. Yeah, do you know what? I used to think like that. Do you know when I was finishing as well? I weren't telling anybody, but I, just, I was just looking forward to it. Finishing? A countdown, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Do you know once you get to like February and March? Yeah. Okay. Please just end. But you were still playing all right, weren't you? No, not really. I was tired. Legs were... <laughs> legs were... Warm. I thought my legs were gone. We played Blackpool away. Blackpool? I forgot they were in the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were getting beat 2-0 and 1-3-2, remember? And I'm what did you say to Sir Alex? I think it was coming to the time where, you know, you think about next year. Yeah. And I just said, ah, I, I want to finish. I don't feel... I feel shocking. I feel terrible. I want to finish and that's it. And he... He wanted me to stay, but he'd play like 15, 20 games maybe. You know, like he did yeah, with yeah. all the players. But I, not that I didn't want to do that, I just, I couldn't prepare in that way. But you didn't, whether you were playing what? Yeah. Do you know how Giggs it? Yeah, Giggs no, was Giggs good at that, yeah. Oh, meticulously, he, he could, he had it down to a T, didn't he? Yeah. Playing every three weeks. I couldn't do that either. I couldn't do that. Like, you'd go and have a jacuzzi for a week or something, wouldn't <laughs> you? Do you know what I mean? Just relax. If, we had a jacuzzi... if I was at the training ground, I'd have to go out and train. I know, but if we had a jacuzzi for a week, we'd put half a stone on, wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, half. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, if, you, I, I, if I knew I wasn't playing, I switched off. Yeah. Whereas he could switch on and rest. Oh, he's brilliant, that's it. He could just get himself ready for 20 games a year, couldn't he? <laughs> Perfectly. Well, that was me at the end. I just went to him and said, it's no good, this, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. It's, my legs are gone. I couldn't get up and down. I couldn't move my feet. If there's a quick winger against me, I was done. But in midfield, you could sit there. Well, you did sit there till you were 38. 
I think with yours was a bit more mental though, wasn't it? You didn't really, you had other things going on, didn't you, at that point? <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> you, 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 seriously, we used to go on a train. He'd bring, bring <laughs> big architect maps of his <laughs> house and stuff. We're, we're going out, I'll play Arsenal away. We used to have our bedrooms on the Virgin, Virgin train. <laughs> you had a gun on it. No, I switched off a bit because of my performances. I just knew I had to, I just knew I had to move into something well, else. That's what changed everyone's mind, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what makes everyone stop performances. Do you have bouts where you feel a bit more down? Not loads of time. I'd say, most of the time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Little Bulgarian weightlifter, wasn't it? Gary Neville off, he used to call <laughs> it. <laughs>
like properly depressed her out, just no. downtimes, like everyone. But I don't need to go and see anyone about it. Just get on with it. Get on with it. Right, you got a light hey. option in a medium option. Yeah. Do you feel better training though? I couldn't say I enjoy it, but I feel better once I've done it. So do you enjoy doing that? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Why? Because I like feeling stronger in my body, because I feel better in my mind. Do you do it to look better? No, I do it because it's my first goals. I, you know I put weight on when I finished playing football for a couple of years and I, I went round. Uh, and I kept people just it's battering. Not too, isn't it? Yeah. But it's not their business, is it? Last one. I know, but yeah, I felt shit. Like that. I felt the big thing is when your clothes don't fit you. <laughs> the worst thing is, is when you've got, you've got to have two or three different sizes of shirts for the other year. Yeah. So your summer, you might be a bit <laughs> narrow, then you, your 15 and a half shirt colour comes out, then you're 16 and a half, and you're 16. Oh, I've, got a large you know I mean? a, I've got a large and a medium one, though. <laughs> but that's me. I was up to 16 and a half on my collar. 16 and a half? Yeah, and now I'm like that's 15. That's big, isn't it? It's big. I was up to 16 and a half. God, I've got a fat neck. I don't think I've been 16 and a half. <laughs> He's fat shaming me on the overlap. <laughs> <laughs> on the overlap. <laughs> to be an inclusive gym, He's fat shaming me on the overlap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Try, try about we try to help inclusive. people on this programme. <laughs> Two more. I love it. Twelve, well done. Just ah. doing three sets on this, like the squats. Do you when you said that you've not found anything that you like that you did? Yeah. Well, that, that was never going to happen, was it, really, in terms of you, for you? I know, but I can't get my head around that. That he's just been told to stop? I'll tell you one thing I've enjoyed, is getting involved with Salford. What, the managing the recruitment? I'm not managing it, but well, helping seeing out. it? Yeah, helping out, yeah. Would you do that on a full time? Would I do it? We should probably do this actually in our business meetings rather than on the Oh yeah, on the overlap. <laughs> Just a weird thing, right? It's yeah. the one thing I've really liked doing, I swear. How long have I known you? Uh, 13, since you were 13, 14. You wouldn't ring me up and say to me, unless I'm interviewing you today, and say, I really enjoy doing that recruitment for the last few months. Well, why would I do that? <laughs> I guess just thought I'd let you know I really enjoy what I'm doing. Three more, three more. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Yeah, I'd like you to talk to three, me and tell me. One. I really enjoyed doing that. that. Last set of each of these. I really enjoy doing that. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah, well, why would I? I don't know. But why would you not speak to people about things? Why? Why do people want to know what I'm enjoying doing? Well, because if you're not enjoying doing something and you've not found something that you like, but you found something that you like, yeah. But now if you tell people, we, we can do something about it. Like what? Well, maybe we could look at a full-time role at Salford doing it. You've only done it part-time, really, haven't you, in the, in the transfer window? You can't afford me, though, can you? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the budgets. <laughs> Jackie's going to get 12 on these now. 37 like me or something yeah. forward. All right, Phil. Yeah, mate. I'm strong as right. I'm strong, that, guys. Yeah. Do you do weights Fine. every day? No, I do Barry's. He's been training around here, Josh, already. Do you do? Oh, are you? <laughs> training with AJ and, and Tyson Fury, mate. That's what I do. <laughs> Enjoy it as well. You got four more. It's good that. You wanna have a go? What? You wanna go at 12 with them? Yeah, come on. I, I've got half right on my shoulders. Come on. I've got half right on my shoulders, honestly. When you get stronger and better, what's it, sir? There was a sign somewhere, so. Stronger than yesterday. Look, stronger than yesterday. <laughs> If there's nothing else, we've learned that you actually enjoy something in yeah. your post-football career. I've learned that in the last two weeks. See, I haven't had much time to tell you, have I? We're just in this transfer window. Yeah. I knew you were busy with it when you rang, when you texted me oh. three times in a day. I thought, f there must be some, there's something up with him. I was busy with it. <laughs> well, do you know that last week when you said? Yeah. Panic week has begun? Yeah. I weren't panicking. <laughs> until you f***ing sent that. <laughs> <laughs> And to be fair, I weren't panicking then. But for the something. next three days, it was utter panic. <laughs> Do it you was chaos. Something? So I've done the transfer and just like, oh, not, not done it, but you like you get all the calls coming through. That last week is awful. You just get called all the time. People are like, Do you want to pay this money? Do you yeah, want that one? Do you want that one? It's like player? when I was watching the Arsenal documentary, you imagine it to be well more professional than it is, don't you? It's just it's like not, them two on the phone. Frantic. Speaking yeah. to it's a frantic. Speaker. Yeah, that's all it it's is. Mad, isn't it? It's mad, it? What they did it was, was what Salford did. I was just talking you know I mean? to a loudspeaker, like, oh, I've got yeah. an email off Barca. So, yeah. do you know, I text them all, three or four of them, and because I've not done it this, and I said, <laughs> You weren't getting involved. I, no, no, I just said, Look, this is normally panic week. <laughs> Decide what you didn't you're say this is normally panic week, <laughs> this is panic week. I said, this is norm, I said, this is panic week, right? We, we had everyone we were done. Right? And then, I said, but... But Brandon was going. I said, decide what you're going to do at the start of the week and don't change from the start of the week to the end. What happens is... It changes every five change. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it, people change their mind, money change, everything changes. That's what, then we lost Brandon. Someone came in with a bid for Brandon, didn't they? Yeah, we knew that was happening, though, didn't we? Yeah. And we were half ready for it. 
I say half ready. It's like when you see, like, Ross's. oh, they're in talks with someone, you picture yeah. like five men in suits either side of no. the table, don't you? But it's just like. No, oh, it's oh. frantically calling each other yeah. and texting. That's how it was. To be fair, I'm ringing Craig Garner, ring David Way, get. It's mental. Yeah. Right, back on the track now, anyway. He's already somebody rang him. He snapped me one day, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was an old in Italy, really relaxed. I thought, he snapped there. He I'm, <laughs> time to go back to the pool. <laughs> I can switch pain off as well, Scalzi, can you? Who the f are you? <laughs> I can switch pain off. He had to call my arms up going into training because he was scratchy, he was biting. When I saw them signs and you start Googling stuff, don't you? What is yeah. autism? And I just know. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying this episode. This is just a quick thank you to Skybet, our partners, for making this show happen. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Please subscribe, there's loads more episodes coming up and I hope you're enjoying it. Right, let's get back into this episode. This is the Paul Scholes game, this. Speed up here. Whoa! Oh, sharp little burst there, yeah. It's gonna be good there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it, oh, 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 no! oh, One shot. Go. Yes, guys. Yes. Better. Oh, they got 50. So you're going to go in here. You're going to go a minute on, minute off. You're going to do three minutes each. Let's go. My game. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. some starter. That is proper Bulgarian, isn't it? I've seen the stance as well. Do you know what I always think? I'm doing this. My daughter's going to get eaten by a shark, so I've got to keep doing it or else. If sulfur in the last five minutes, if I give in, they won't win. <laughs> I think shit like that. Get your pace early, you can't make it up at the end. Kiddo. Yeah, it's stuck with me all my life, that. Brian Kidd. I can switch pain off as well, Scalzi, can you? Who the f are you? <laughs> I can switch pain off. I can switch pain off. Who's taught you that? You Tyson. Switch it off. Yeah, switch it off. AJ. Five, four, three, two, He's yes. Yeah. Never stop. Come on, Salford. <laughs> Come on, Salford. <laughs> Keep going halfway oh, on the last one. Yeah. It's not your arms, it's your head. The pain is in your head. Imagine you're just running into that box, Patrice is about to cross it. Ten seconds. Come on. And you're just about to get there. <laughs> you didn't stop, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Scolzi, talk to me about your normal day, standard day. If I've got Aiden, I'll take him to school. I'll make come here for a, an hour, if I'm feeling all right, if I want to, if I can be asked. Um, may go a bit of golf, do all their washing, standard day. I have things to do, obviously, don't know when there's work and stuff. Yeah. When I say to you, like, you know, have a meeting at three, you'll say, is that because you're picking Aiden up from school or because you're... Yeah. Yeah. When I can't do it, it's because I'm picking Aiden up from school, yeah. Can you just talk to us a little bit about Aiden and obviously what happened early in his life? Well, yeah, yeah. He... We knew there was problems develop... development-wise with his walking and speech and stuff when he was... So he was about 18 months, two, two years. I remember actually going to a doctor's in Oldham and seeing like pictures on the wall, we were checking for some, I don't know, you have tests on you when you're 18 yeah. for everything, or injections or something. And there were all signs about what autism was, strangely enough. And as soon as I read them, I knew. Straight away, that, that was what was wrong with them. And I, th I don't think they diagnosed till they're about two or two and a half officially. And when, when, whenever, when he got to that right age. Did yeah. you already know at that point, yeah. you think, yeah? Yeah, I knew. Yeah, I knew. It, it, cause when I saw them signs and you start Googling stuff, don't you? What yeah. is autism? And he had all the signs of it. So that was, it made it quite, I didn't need a diagnosis. Yeah. I just knew. What, what impact has that on your life? Aiden? Yeah. Oh, massive. Impacts on all, all our lives, really. You can't, it's not a normal life, do you know what I mean? Because you can't do things that we probably like to do as a family. Never been able to do it. We, we, we always try to make time you know, like once a week we take him out for tea when they were younger, especially. Not so much now, he's like 23, 21, they do do their own thing. But yeah, it's a big impact, big and impact. And how's it, how's it in terms of just generally, I mean, obviously you, if you wanted to take a job away, if you were offered a job, you couldn't take a job away, could you? No, I couldn't move away, no. You'd never move away from him, would you? No, you can't, I can't do. Unless you came with me, 
But no, it'd be impossible. He, he, he's happier, do you know what I mean? He's, he's happy at school. I know he's 17 now. Yeah. But he's happy at Cali, right? But he, he's 17 now. And jeopardising his happiness is just not worth it. When you know he's... Because, do you know what I mean? It was hard. From being like three to 15. And when I found out, we, I was still playing. What, what was that, that was first hard. moment like when you found it? What, what, what happened? What happened? You know, take us back there. Well, I, I knew there was something wrong with it. I knew we weren't right. So about, it took him ages to walk. I reckon about 18 months, he had a few words. We had, when I say words, they were just words that me and Claire probably didn't understand. I mean, they weren't like proper words. And we, we had to like count his words. I think he had some like 100 words. I think 18 months later, when he was three or four, he probably had 10 at the most, just weren't using them. He was like using actions, he was going to the food, to the cupboard to get food out and stuff, weren't telling you anything. And he was just getting frustrated all the time with it. And yeah, it was hard, it was hard looking after him because he wasn't sleeping. He could, he could go right through the night, go to school the day after, stay up. And not sleep? Not sleep, not sleep. How was, how was that for you and Claire? Oh, it was hard, because I was having to go to training, I was having to play games. The first time we were playing Derby away when we just found out, I was a waste of time. I'm sorry, I didn't really want, I didn't want to be playing. But I won't tell anyone, like I said before, I won't tell anyone anything. And the manager left me out the, the, the day after. Are you, are you didn't tell the manager what happened? No, I didn't tell him, no. I can't remember when I told him. I was six months, a year after or something, I told him. I, I, I don't know why I told him, because it still wouldn't have affected anything. You know what I mean? There's nothing I could have done differently. But it was hard. Some tough to, I, I don't tell you, like, he had to cover my arms up going into training because he, he was scratching, he was biting. I was going to say, the first time I remember, I remember said to you, well, you sit next to me, didn't you? Yeah. And you had scratches all over your face. Yeah. I went, what's happened to you? You just, you just asked that yeah. question. Yeah. The worst was getting his hair cut, wasn't it? That's what you, you said, you used to have to pin him down to get his hair. I had to get him in a headlock. <laughs> I had to cut his hair. It, it was horrible, but it just, uh, do you know what I mean? It had to be done. And he's biting you, scratching you. And it weren't just them times, sometimes. You pick him up from school and he's scratching his back. You don't know what's wrong with him. He's leaning over the cars. He's if, not done if, that for ages now. Though, no, he's been brilliant. Honestly. Is he not doing that now? No. no. Touch wood, the last five years, he's so relaxed, so calm, so happy. But for them, I'd say for about eight or nine years, it was horrific. You say we, we, we could be in a car, I could be driving. He's jumping out the back seat, grabbing Claire's hair, grabbing me. And you, you don't know why. It's just frustrating because he probably doesn't know what he's doing. Now he has like, Every single day, every single night, he asks what he's doing the day after. So he'll say, school. So you know then, he's, he's thinking about his routine tomorrow. Right. So you tell him school, you tell him if he's going swimming after school, what he's going to have to eat. So he say pizza after just school. Just has to be proper like, in place, doesn't it? Like, say if he's at grandma and granddad's house, if my mum walks in or something, he's like, gets like, what's going on here? Yeah, he? like, what's going on here? It's yeah. a break in the routine. Yeah. yeah. But do, do you know what? He has got a lot better with that. Yeah. Ru and routine for autistic children is massive. But he, he can cope with it. But when he was young, he couldn't cope with it. He couldn't cope with it at all. So the scratching, the biting, no sleeping. So just, you had, you had scars on your arm, honestly, for years. Yeah. And there was no way to stop it even. At I don't know if I said this before, but at the time you're thinking, he's out of control, you, you can't really. How are you going to look after him? You might have to, and I know a lot of them do like residential care. And it, I don't think it ever crossed Claire's mind, but it, it crossed mine at times. Especially when I was picking up from school and he was just going ballistic. And you thought you won't be able to handle him? Yeah, you just don't know how you got to handle him. If he was like that now, because he's the same size as Aaron. Yeah. Is he the same size as you, a bit smaller than you? I don't really Probably know. Probably about the same size, isn't he? He's massive though, isn't he? If he was he like that now, it'd be impossible. And what, what does he do now? How does it look moving forward beyond school and beyond what he does now? I don't know. He's got, he's got two years left at his school. The school's been brilliant, actually. He, he was supposed to go to another building, which is like a, you know, from being 16 years of age to 19, I think. But they've let him stay in the school. Because he was happy there. Because he's happy there, he, he knows people there. And it's a bit weird taking him to school. <laughs> he's up here, do you know what I mean? He's in kids' classes like this right. size. But he, he's like a, probably like a one-year-old child, isn't he? One to two-year-old child. Does he need 24-hour care? You know, yeah. Every minute of the day, yeah? Yeah, every minute of the day, yeah. Every minute of the day. He's still like 17, there's still toileting problems and stuff, so. Does it help you speaking about it? Because you never really spoke about it a lot until the last few years, have you? In terms of, you know, you're talking about autism and the impact it has. I don't really talk about it. I don't really talk about it. I put stuff on Instagram and pictures and the autism time and stuff. 
And I think it helps people on there more than anything. That's why I do that. A lot of them can see, can relate to what we've been through. And you now I put the one of the Claire doing his hair. It's, it's so much better now. And it shows people that progression, progression, and things can change. Because there'll be people who will have a kid like Aidan did when he was three or four years old, and it'll be exactly the same. But now he's got to 16, 17, you can see that there's light at the end of the tunnel for him. And I get so many messages about it. You know, keep posting about this, it's so helpful to us and stuff From like that. From people who follow you on Instagram? From people who follow me on Instagram, yeah, and have children with autism. I don't think Man United are a possession football club, if you know what I mean. No, I don't. Uh, not, they are, well, but not well, they are, you mean. They are in, possibly not the big games, they're not, I don't think they no. are. It was always about substance over style. In the overlap, we have a section called Failure is a Bruise, Not a Tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and it's relating to when I went to Valencia, that when you have a bad time, it's a bruise, it wears off, and it's not permanent, which a tattoo is. Sorry, I weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking over there, thinking about this. Sorry, right. start again. Failure is a bruise. Failure is a bruise. Not a tattoo. Say all these sayings. Go on, carry on. Right, so when I came back from Valencia, it was sent to me by someone and basically it says... So you failed, but it, it didn't hurt you for that long? Yeah, it wears off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So in this Maybe. section, we ask our guests, which I can tell you're really buying into, yeah. um, a low point. And I'm going to poke you a little bit in respect of Oldham and coaching. I know it's something you wanted to do, but you can say something else, but I'm still going to talk to you about Oldham. <laughs> Was that, would that be your point where you just thought, oh, what am I doing, a low point? Uh, it's hard to describe it as a low point because I, I, I quite enjoyed it. There was one low point at the end when the, the interference came in, but as was a whole... Trying, was he trying to pick your team? He was for the... Yeah. I knew all about it. I'd heard so many stories. I was told not to do it. He's a, he's a nightmare and all this kind of stuff. But I was just determined to, to give it a go. Because and you loved Oldham, obviously. I, I loved Oldham, obviously. I, I, I just wanted to give it a go, see, see what happened. Um, and for the main, for the first three weeks, <laughs> first three or four weeks, I, I, I enjoyed it. There was one game who was coming into Lincoln away, and he pulled me in in the morning. He wanted to see me before we were just the coach, coach outside the ground. We, we were just about to go Lincoln, top of the league. Lincoln were flying. We, we were never well. We've got to try and win, obviously. Yeah. But, it had been unlikely, and he, he wanted me to leave the captain out. So uh, as soon as you say, leave anybody, I didn't care who it was. Yeah. As soon as he, he said that, I, I'd gone already. What did you say to him? No, I'm not. I said, no, no, it's not happening. And he, he had like three phones on his desk. <laughs> Honestly, he said, look, I've got clips, I've got clips of all the mistakes he's made. I'm not interested, I don't care about the clips. He, he, he's been our best player, he's leader, he's brilliant in the dressing room. Great with all the young lads. Training was brilliant as a 37, 30 year old. Did everything, kept up with everyone. And I just, uh, I couldn't accept it. So I, well, I got on the bar, I was fuming. So did you pick him that night? Yeah, played him, yeah. yeah. What did he say to you after that? I went the day after. Oh, you, you resigned the day after? I resigned the day after, yeah. But in terms of coaching, you obviously wanted to get in. You've obviously had a frustrating time there and that's not gone well, but would you not want to go back in again? I don't think it's something I'd choose to do again, no. <laughs> Did it put you off that experience, or what, what was it that sort of like...? I, I didn't realise how 24-7 it would be. I think there was no time, there was no time to do anything. And, and as we spoke about before, having young kids and having Aidan especially, it took attention away from him and, and it made it difficult. You'll, you'll know, won't you, from being at yeah. Valencia, you go into bed thinking what I'm going to do in the morning yeah. training, and then you've got problems all day to deal it's a with. Massive commitment. Isn't it? It's, it, it's your life. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure how these people do it. You've got to be a special kind of person to do it. And for the month that I did it, I'd say I enjoyed it, but it took away a lot of the rest of your life. 
Manchester United post your playing career. Your take on what's happened? It was always going to be hard to live up to what had happened, I suppose, wasn't it? It was difficult. But people say it was difficult for David Moyes to come in and and people slag. I think people have a go at the manager's team the last the year he won it. I think people. Yeah, there's a lot. People, there is that feeling that there was yeah, a bad team there. It's bollocks. That, that, that team won the league by ten points that year. Do you remember that? Yeah. They the, the Van Persie year. The Van Persie year. A lot of people were possibly getting a little bit older. Yeah, of course they were, but it wasn't a bad team. People are making out as if it was a terrible team, and look, teams teams get better as well. Don't they? City, we always knew City were coming, didn't we? But I, yeah. I always remember you saying it. We were in Qatar one time. On yeah. pre-season, you see City are coming. Like, now, nah, what are you on about? Yeah. But they were, they were coming. Liverpool yeah. were coming. Getting closer. Yeah, and look, it, it, it was going to be difficult. And managers came in and I thought bought bad players, really. I think Van Gaal, it's this word, I, I hate new words about football, philosophies. I, I hate that word that managers, I know managers do have philosophy, they come with their own philosophy, but I think United probably, they had their own philosophy that a manager should come into. Van Gaal playing his possession football. I don't think Man United are a possession football club, if you know what I mean. No, I don't. Uh, not they, are, but they are, but not. Well, they yeah, are, what you mean. They are in, possibly not the big games. They're not, I don't think they no. are. It was always about substance over style. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Actually scoring goals, making chances rather than being pretty on the eye. And I think, even with this new manager now, I think he stumbled across it because I think the old, I think the old Trafford crowd, they get nervous when we're trying to play 10, when the goalkeeper's trying to play 10 yards to the centre half. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, 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 think they get, I think they get really nervous with that. Well, they don't like it, do they? They don't like it, no, because it's not, cause when you talk about a club with a philosopher, that is not Man United, that, that's Barcelona. Yeah. It's Manchester City now. It's Ajax. It's Ajax, yeah. yeah, and I don't know if this manager's done it on purpose or he just got lucky with it. Really. Because after Brentford, he went more direct, you mean? After went Brentford, a bit more after quicker. Brentford, he realised, and some of these managers are stubborn, aren't they? Pep wouldn't have changed. No. But I think this manager's realised, I don't really have the players to do that. He, had it, he could do it at Ajax, of course yeah. he could. Okay. You're not playing against the better opposition, but after that Brentford game, there was a change that he just couldn't do it because it's just not Man United. What do you make of the all year? Because I mean, to be honest with you, at the end on television, I think we were all we were all dying a little bit, weren't we? Obviously, because we knew him tough. so well. Yeah, it was tough. But we, we, we played with him for so long, and and, and look, he, he was trying. He, look, he's gonna try and he, to to be. He was more attacking, wanting a little bit gung ho at times. I, I would have thought, but. What went wrong last season? What's your take on what went wrong at the start of last season? Because it went from being just missed out on Europa League, finished second, above Liverpool, and all of a sudden it just went... Fell off the edge of a cliff. Yeah. I think unless you're involved, guys, unless you're in there, it's very hard to tell. It looked from the outside as if players were taking the piss a little bit, really. Um, They were doing what they want. They weren't really... like, Like going onto the football pitch and just being in their own world, doing what they wanted to do rather than what was expected of them or what the manager wanted them to do. And performances just went, didn't they? But the United transfer window that summer was Varane, Sancho, Cristiano. Everyone thought that was like an unbelievable transfer window. Looking back, was it though? Was it really? You've got a young player from Germany who spent a lot of money on who it looked done, done great in Germany, don't get me wrong, but he was unproven in the, in the, in the best league. He was unproven in the Premier League. Cristiano was proven, of course he was, but he was 36. Are, are they great signings? Varane? I, I always think, why would a club like Leo, Real Madrid let Varane go? There must be something not quite right. And if you looked at him last season, he didn't look right. He was always injured, there was always yeah. something wrong with him. So as far as the transfer window went, people got carried away with it because of, because of names. And still, I just didn't, I didn't think it was great. I, I, never, I haven't, I'm trying to think of a transfer window I have enjoyed with them. I don't think... I they don't, don't do transfer windows very well, do they? Since, since Sir Alex left, transfer no. windows have been, have been, even this one, 
you know, Anthony and Casemiro came at the end, but it was a mess with De Jong and with an Outovic and with... It was a mess. It has been a, a complete mess, hasn't it? Well, it, it looks like they don't have anybody who's in charge of doing it, really. It, there's nobody who takes responsibility for it, I don't think. Is it Johnny Murtagh? Is it the manager? Is it someone else? Nobody... Recruitment, as we've seen, very small scale we solve. It, it's hard, it can be yeah. difficult. It, it's not the easiest thing to do, but somebody has to take ultimate responsibility for it. I just think they need somebody in charge of it. I, I don't think there's anybody... Well, we don't know, there might be somebody behind the scenes who, who does take responsibility, but what will happen eventually, the manager will get blamed for it. I always say that about us when they say about golden generation. The Brazil we got knocked out of the tournament against in 2002, of had Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, you think, that's a golden generation. <laughs> We're golden, and they're golden. like, are they platinum or something? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Taking the piss out of us. England, a World Cup's on the horizon. Why did you stop playing for England? Didn't what? like it, didn't enjoy it. Do you regret it? that? Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit, I What do you regret? Not being successful with them. So I thought we had... I'm not, not playing well enough with them, to be honest with you. You, or do you think the style me? of play, the system? No, me. <coughs> I'd never blame styles of players or assists. So look, how many people talk about that left-hand side? I did it loads of times for United. You know, when Giggs was injured, I had his problems. And I loved playing it there for United, whether it was just uh, I was more comfortable in the United team doing it. You didn't like being away from home, did you? No, I hated being away from home. No, I was always like that. I just remember going to your room in the mid-afternoon. Dark. <laughs> dark. And it'd be a sunny day, <laughs> and you'd have the curtains closed, yeah. and it'd yeah. be dark. Yeah. Went, I just can't stand the lights coming in, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's a bit weird, aren't I? <laughs> I told you that before. No, I, I hated being away from home. I, you didn't like the long, sort of like, no. slow trips, did you? Just the, no. the being in the hotel for 10 days. No, I hated month. it, but I, yeah. It, but I hated that when I was a kid, you know, I've gone on all with my dad. You didn't like weeks. going away? No, I, I just wanted to be at home. I couldn't wait to get home. Whenever I went on holiday or anywhere, wherever I went, I just could not wait to get home. Is that still the same now? No. I, I find it difficult to commit to, to go to play. Like, like I've been offered to go to the World Cup this year and do yeah, some I TV. Yeah, I told that you've been offered to go to the World Cup for a month, and you, you'd like, you know, why won't you come? I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's your answer. <laughs> no, but things like that aren't that easy for me because I've made them. Because you'd have to give up that time. I can't just go willy-nilly when I want, you know what I mean? Yeah. You want me to go for a month and come home for three days? It's just... I, don't, I wouldn't like it. I don't, I'm not the most sociable of people as well anyway, do you know what I mean? And being around people that I don't know, now look, it wouldn't have been just... It's not for me. It's not for me. And was that the biggest problem with England, do you think, the football or the non-football side of it, that sort of what would be potential loneliness or wanting to be at home? No, I don't, I don't get lonely. Never get lonely. I, I love being on my own. Um, I just... I, I didn't play that well for England. That, that's probably... That puts you in... Is that a reflection upon you or by the coaching and the managers? No, me. It's definitely me. I was playing in positions where I play for United all the time. I just didn't, I just wasn't good enough at what I was doing. You could argue that I didn't have, I said I didn't have somebody next to me who played that position better than me. Just that you, Stevie and Frank probably all needed someone different alongside yeah. you, didn't you? We all needed Michael Carrick next to us. Well, he was there, Michael Carrick. I didn't play with that. I, I know, very, no, he was uh, never very picked. Rare, yeah, he was never yeah. picked. Yeah. And he, he probably wasn't as good at that time, Michael. It was when he went to Man United yeah. and he realised, Jesus Christ, you know what I play with? Nicky, I, play, I did play with Nicky a few times, yeah. but it was always you know. Gerard, Lampard. But like you say, I think all three of us needed that person who played that position properly. I don't think any of us did. You're trying Steven, to, you could argue... You're trying to fit the best three players into a yeah. team in the positions that they played. That, that was it. Which ultimately. is ridiculous. With Bex as well. Yeah, with Bex as well, yeah. And none of us were defensively minded, let's say. The big thing with England, though, was when, when I got to 28, 29, when I retired, the manager at United, at Sir Alex, was... He was almost bringing me back into that position of a controlling midfield player. And when I went to England, they were still expecting to get forward and score, score goals, goals. All, all the time. And when I didn't score a goal, 
I, I was having a nightmare. I weren't playing well. Yeah. And it was almost, I never really transitioned the way for England that I did for United because from, from 29, 30, I'd probably say I enjoyed football more so than when of, I was running forward. Because you played in that goals. deeper line position. Deeper line position. I, I don't even remember. I don't like, I don't like corner holding midfield. No. I control in yeah. midfield. Player. I don't even remember you now as an attacking midfielder. Yeah. Because the last 10 last years. Last 10 years, you've just literally sat there with yeah. Michael Carrick. Which, but that, that role never happened with England. Did the England manager come back and say, this is how I want you? Because I know you got asked to go back by Capello and others. Why well, would you not Capello go... never asked me. Who well, was it? it was Capello's regime. Who asked you then? Stuart Pearce. Right, but he was his coach and said, look, but what, did, he, did he not sit down with you and say, this is how I want you to no. play? No. I'd, I'd had a decent season, I think. For United? For United, before the South African World Cup, wasn't it? Before the World Cup in South Africa. And I was tempted. I was really tempted. I was confident. I was playing well at the time. I think I told you In to that go. position. Did you? Yeah. Probably I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I felt great. I think Carragher actually came out of retirement as well. They asked right. him to go. Yeah, Carragher, yeah. And I was actually, I was, I, it was in my mind all the time. They only I really just wanted to go. The tournament, didn't they? I, th I think it was like a, a month or something. Or? Yeah, it might have been less, 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 less than that before they were actually travelling to the World Cup. There was never a meeting at how you want to play. And I think that just Stuart Pershing and me. Put me off again a bit. The fact that Capello didn't ring himself. The fact that Capello didn't ring me himself or come and come see me and say, yeah. "This is what we expect from you." And because I felt I felt great at the time. I felt fit. What, what year was the South Africa World Cup? 2010. 2010. So I'd have been 36, 35, nearly 36. But I felt great. I was playing well for United, and I, I, I really I was so close to being tempted to go in. But the final. I think because Fabio Capello had a great reputation. Yeah. You know, all these massive clubs, AC Milan, Real Madrid. I think if he had sat down for maybe five minutes, then I, I, I probably wouldn't have said no. And what about this World Cup for this group? Have you got a message that you would give to these players going to this World Cup and how they'll do? I think they'll do all right. Um, do you like them? I do, yeah. I think there's some real, real exciting players. I, I do worry about them slightly defensively. Must admit, goalkeeper as well, I think, could be a problem. But I think when you look at you look around the teams in the World Cup, I don't think there's that. that I don't teams. think the quality's there. Now, was it the. I think it was there when we was there, or are we, are we just saying that because we didn't do that well? But you mm. think of the teams we played against, your Spains, your Frances, your Germanys, they were brilliant. Brazil, how good were Brazil? Argentina. I, I, always I, don't, I don't think the standard's anywhere near that. I always say but that I might about be wrong. Us. I always say that about us when they say about golden generation. And the Brazil we got knocked out of, of the tournament against in 2002, I wasn't there. You look at that team. Had Ronaldo, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, you think, that's a golden generation. <laughs> Roberto Carlos. Yeah, <laughs> like, we've got the golden. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're golden. And they're golden. like, are they platinum or something? Yeah. You know what I mean? Taking the piss out of us. People must laugh at us, really. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> Their countries must piss us off. <laughs> they were the golden generation. Have you seen this team? See the French team, Zidane, Henri, <laughs> Laurent Blanc. Yeah. Unbelievable teams. Spain. <laughs> Spain team, Chavi Busquets and Iniesta. We've got me and you from Middleton. <laughs> Going bright red in 32 degree heat. <laughs> yeah. For, fa some factor 50 on. Do you remember to... that game, that Brazil game? Oh my God. We warmed up inside, it was too hot to go outside, remember? <laughs> <laughs> too hot. Do it after 20 minutes. So I gave two goals away against. Uh, uh, Fiasco ag da Gama. <laughs> <laughs> against Vasco da Gama in the World Club Championship. And basically. Mm. I get this message from him after the game. Fiasco de Gamma. <laughs> I'd read it in the paper the day after I was pissing myself. I weren't there. I know. I was pissing myself. I was Fiasco like, de Gamma. I was mentally at a low point and he's there taking the piss saying Fiasco de Gamma. It was Edmundo, I remember him. Just look those two goals up that I gave away, the sort of back passes. They were just weak back passes to Edmundo and Edmundo. Romario. Right, Scolzi, I've enjoyed. I'll tell you what, this park's unbelievable, by the way. Nice, I didn't think Golden was as nice as this. But well, it is. <laughs> Goldie, thank you very much. Cheers, well done. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Another episode of The Overlap finished. I hope you really enjoyed it. Brought to you by Skybet. And we've got some amazing interviews coming up before Christmas. Please subscribe so you're across all the interviews that we have.